There's this idea that our next giant leap for mankind will be putting boots on the ground of Mars. And yet the truth is right now. As you watch this video, Mars is the only planet inhabited exclusively by robots. As of 2025, the only active agents moving and operating on Mars are three rovers. Curiosity, Perseverance, and Tianwen-1. And this will likely remain the case for the foreseeable future. In recent years, the prospect of establishing a human colony on Mars has captured the imagination of scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, and space enthusiasts alike. But despite the tantalizing possibilities, it has become increasingly clear that sending people to live and work on the Red Planet is a much more complex and challenging undertaking than originally envisioned. So when will people actually live on Mars? Well, the short answer is not anytime soon, at least not within the next few decades. And while this may be disappointing to some, it is important to recognize that establishing a Martian colony is a monumental task that requires careful planning and preparation. In this video, we will explore the technological, logistical, and ethical challenges associated with colonizing. Mars and discuss the steps that need to be taken to make it a reality. So sit tight and get ready for an exciting journey to the Red Planet. It's... Why do we want to go to Mars? Why do we dream of a future where humans live and work on the Red Planet? There are many compelling reasons. For one, Mars is the closest planet to Earth that could potentially support human life. It is relatively close, well within a single human lifetime, to travel there. And it has an atmosphere and a magnetic field that could protect us from harmful cosmic radiation. Additionally, Mars offers a unique opportunity for scientific discovery. By studying the planet's geology, climate, and atmosphere, we can learn more about the history of our solar system and the evolution of planets. Moreover, the challenge of colonizing Mars is a test of human ingenuity and determination. It is a way to push the boundaries of what we can accomplish and to inspire future generations to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Finally, a Martian colony could serve as a backup plan for humanity in the event of a disaster on Earth. It could preserve our species and our culture and allow us to start anew if our home planet became uninhabitable. Despite these potential benefits, the challenges of colonizing Mars are immense. One of the biggest obstacles is the distance between Earth and Mars. Even though Mars is the closest candidate for human colonization, it is still incredibly far away. A typical mission takes about nine months to get there and astronauts will have to spend months more on the surface before returning home. During this time, they will be isolated in a small spacecraft with limited supplies and far away from their support systems back on Earth. Another major challenge is the harsh environment of Mars. The planet's surface is cold, dry, and bombarded by cosmic radiation. It is also full of dust storms that can last for months and temperatures that can plummet to minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. These conditions make it difficult for humans to survive and could pose serious risks to our health. But perhaps the most significant challenge of all is the cost of colonizing Mars. Establishing a self-sustaining colony on the red planet would require a massive investment of resources and funding. We would need to develop new technologies and infrastructure to support human life on Mars, including advanced spacecraft, habitats, and life support systems. It would also take a lot of people to make a colony viable. We would need to send thousands of astronauts and support personnel to Mars and sustain them for years on end. And then there's the issue of safety. Colonizing Mars is inherently dangerous, and we could easily lose people in the process. Accidents can happen during launch, transit, or on the surface of Mars and we need to be prepared to deal with the consequences. Despite these challenges, some experts believe that we could colonize Mars within the next 30 years. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, has set a goal of sending humans to Mars by 2026 and establishing a city by 2050. Other companies and organizations are also working towards similar goals. Blue Origin, for example, has developed a heavy lift rocket called New Glenn that could be used to transport people and resources to Mars. The company has also proposed a space station in low Earth orbit that could serve as a hub for Mars missions. For its part, NASA is focused on developing the technologies and capabilities needed to support human exploration of Mars. The agency has been testing new rovers and sample return missions to the planet's surface. 
and it is also working on innovative ways to generate power and resources on Mars. But let's be realistic here. Even with the best efforts of these companies and organizations, colonizing Mars will not be easy. We are talking about sending humans on a one-way trip to another planet. And we still have so much to learn about both the planet itself and the effects of long-duration spaceflight on the human body. And then there's the issue of cost. Even with private investment, colonizing Mars will be extremely expensive. We are talking about a multi-billion dollar project. It will require the full resources of multiple companies and government agencies. So when will people actually live on Mars? The short answer is we don't know. But let me offer a more complete response. Mars is unlikely to be colonized within the next few decades, and that's okay. Let me explain why. The grand visions of human settlements on Mars while captivating often fail to acknowledge the complexities and challenges involved in such an endeavor. Instead, we should embrace a more pragmatic and realistic approach to exploring and understanding the Red Planet. One of the key issues with current plans for Mars colonization is the focus on speed over practicality. Many proponents of Mars colonization are eager to send humans to the planet as soon as possible, often without fully considering the technological and logistical challenges involved. A hasty approach to colonization could result in a poorly planned and executed mission that puts astronauts at risk or fails to establish a sustainable settlement. Furthermore, the emphasis on colonization rather than exploration and research is misplaced. Instead of rushing to build a human colony on Mars, we should prioritize scientific exploration and research to gain a deeper understanding of the planet's history and potential for habitability. This approach would allow us to learn from Mars and determine if it is truly suitable for human life. Before investing heavily in colonization efforts, the focus on colonizing Mars also overlooks the importance of addressing global challenges here on Earth. Issues such as poverty, inequality, climate change, and resource depletion need to be addressed. If we are to have any hope of creating a sustainable future for humanity, attempting to colonize Mars while these problems persist on Earth is not only impractical, but also unethical. We have an obligation to take care of our home planet and its inhabitants before venturing out into space to colonize other worlds. To truly make progress towards colonizing Mars, we need to adopt a more realistic and measured approach. This means investing in long-term research and exploration efforts, it's developing sustainable technologies and addressing global challenges here on Earth. With a more thoughtful and deliberate approach, we can pave the way for a future where humans thrive not only on Earth, but also on other planets like Mars. There are some who argue that colonizing Mars is necessary for the survival of humanity, that we need to establish a backup plan in case something happens to Earth. But is this really the case? What if we were to discover that Mars is not habitable for humans after all? Would we then be left with two destroyed planets instead of one? Furthermore, the effort and resources required to colonize Mars could divert our attention and resources away from addressing pressing issues here on Earth. Instead of investing in space exploration and colonization, could be investing in renewable energy, sustainable agriculture and education. These investments would not only have a greater impact on our lives here on Earth, but would also help preserve the natural beauty and wonder of space for future generations to enjoy. Ultimately, the decision of whether or not to colonize Mars is a moral one. We need to weigh the potential benefits against the risks and challenges involved and decide whether it is the right thing to do. Rather than being driven by fear or the desire for profit, we should strive to find a balance between human ambition and the preservation of our planet and the universe around us. I am not saying that we should abandon our dreams of exploring space and colonizing other worlds. Humanity has always been driven by a sense of curiosity and adventure. But as we venture further into the unknown, we must do so with humility and respect for the world around us. We need to remember that we are all interconnected and that our actions here on Earth have consequences not only for ourselves, but for the entire universe. So let us take the time to explore Mars and other worlds in a responsible and sustainable manner. And let us use our knowledge and understanding of the universe to make our home here on Earth a better place for all.